Hello dear student, this is Devang Shah from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Uh, we have been learning the subject basic electrical engineering and so far we learn about the, uh, the topic which is called a transformer. In that you can check with the topic of the transformers. So first we are going to discuss about the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Based on this law, how the transformation can be possible that we are going to discuss regarding this uh, topic. Then we are going to discuss about the transformers and their constructions, working of transformer and EMF equations. We, we will learn how to get a transformation ratio based on this EMF equations. Then ideal transformer, practical transformer and three phase transformers. So first if we talk about the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction where I have to create an experimental setup where you can easily understand how this electromagnetic induction is possible throughout this process, throughout this experimental setup. So where here AC source is given to the ion core where there are two coils are wound, primary coil and secondary coil. Where you can see in a primary coil it is connected with the AC source and secondary coil which is connected with the Multimeter. So once the AC source is being applied by closing the switch, you can see the EF AC signal is applied to this primary winding. That is a production of magnetic flux in this iron core that will be cut with the secondary winding. There, there is, you can realize a rate of change of magnetic flux with respect to time where the EMF will be induced in a secondary winding. See here the EMF induced in the secondary circuit is caused by the changing the magnetic field through, through the secondary coil. That is the main statement of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and, and that is always happening when the switch in the primary circuit is closed, the emitter reading in the secondary circuit changes the monitoring. So you can see for further depiction of this experiment where an electric current can be induced in a loop by a changing magnetic field the induced current exists only by the magnetic field through, through the loop is changing. So here ultimately there is a changing of magnetic flux and because of the changing of magnetic flux there is the induction of EMF. This principle we define as a Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, right? So this is generally expressed and induced EMF is produced in the loop by changing the magnetic field. So overall uh, principle behind this electromagnetic induction is that there must be a rate of change of magnetic flux in this particular coil. So if it is related with the primary coil, uh, if it is related with the primary coil, it is uh, it is defined as whatever induced EMF is a self-induced EMF, and, and it is related with the secondary coil that would be the mutually induced EMF. So the statement of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction is that. The EMF induced in a circuit is directly proportional to the time rate of change of magnetic flux throughout the circuit and that equation we define, that statement in terms of the equation we define as E is equal to minus d phi by dt. There is a rate of change of magnetic flux with respect to time, that is the induction of EMF. Here the negative sign is that it is in opposite, the, whatever induced EMF it is in opposite direction of applied force, right? And that is defined as a Lenz law. So the, uh, the polarity is given by the Lenz law, right? So if the circuit consists of n number of loops or n number of turns of primary and secondary winding based on that, all the, all the same area, the magnetic flux phi b is the flux throughout one loop and induced EMF in, in every loop as per the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction is E is equal to minus n into d phi by dt. So this is overall the concept behind the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So this is uh, exactly I, I tried to correlate with the transformer actions, right? So now onwards we'll start with the actual definition of transformer and so on. So first learn about the importance of transformer where I have to use the transformer, why the transformer is needed in an industrial application, why the transformer is needed in a residential applications, right? So all over you can see the application of transformer where even you are charging your mobile phone in that uh, uh, there is a conversion from AC to DC to charge your mobile phone. For this conversion, the first components to uh, convert uh, 
uh, AC signal to a lower value of AC signal, you require a transformer, right? So, uh, you can see here there is a power plant where the AC uh, signal generation is possible. From this, there is a 12 kV of AC generation and that 12 kV is applied to the step up transformer. From that step up transformer that is converted into a 400 kV and kV will be uh, transmitted over a long distance and at the end you, you can see the step down transformer and that step down transformer again is going to be converted into a 13 kV line and the, from this 13 kV uh, line from the grid that can uh, be available at for, for a residential or uh, industrial application. So, you can see the complete terminology here where uh, there is a power station from power station there is a generation of uh, three phase AC signal or single phase AC signal from uh, make it a step up transformer. So, you have to design a step up transformer. So, that particular line the generation of 12 kV is converted into a 400 kV through the step up transformer and that is transmitted through a transmission uh, line and at the receiver side you can see there is a uh, distribution. So, for this distribution 400 kV is converted again into a 12 kV uh, at the grid and from this uh, grid it is transmitted over your home or uh, any industrial application. So, this is how where the transformer is needed here. The transformer is needed uh, to step up the voltage as well as transformer is needed to step down the uh, voltage. So step up the voltage and step down the voltage. Now, at uh, simple at your mobile charging, you are using the step down transformer, right. So, this is what uh, the about the importance of transformer uh, and the uh, functionality of transformer, right. Now, we further discuss about the transformer. So, uh, what is a transformer? So, let us discuss about the definition of transformer where it requires or it has a two uh, windings, one is called a primary winding, another one is called a secondary winding. So, based on this uh, symbolic representation of transformer, here you can see there is a primary winding, there is a secondary winding and in between there is a core and that core is a laminated core. So, once you apply the voltage at a primary winding, there is a generation or there is a production of magnetic flux around the core and that will generate or induced EMF. So, basically the transformer is a static device. It is not a movable device, but transformer is a static device that transfer electric power from one circuit to another circuit with the change in voltage or current level, right. Uh, it does so without change of frequency and power and it accomplishes this by electromagnetic induction which is called a mutual inductance. So, here as I said the um, generation of magnetic flux that will uh, linked with the secondary winding. So, this uh, induced EMF we define as a mutual induced EMF that, that is called the, um, the basic principle behind the transformer. So, here the transformer is working on a principle of electromagnetic induction uh, and this is given by a Faraday's law. Now, let us uh, check the symbol of this uh, transformer. So, you can see this is a symbol of transformer where at one end you have a primary winding and another end you have a secondary winding and in between there is a two parallel line you consider as a core right. Now, same here if we talk about this, this is a core and it is a rectangular shape that is defined as a core. So, at one end uh, you have to uh, wound a specific coil and that uh, coil we define as a uh, primary winding uh, which is connected with the source and that source is a AC sinusoidal source in between with the switch, right. So, you consider now the another arm of this uh, rectangular core you have uh, connected a secondary winding. So, always remember primary winding is connected with the source and secondary winding is connected with the load, right. So, here uh, once you apply the AC uh, voltage then there is uh, there is a switch if you going to uh, connect. So, there is a primary winding having the number of turns is N1, there is a secondary winding and having the number of turns of N2. This is how here the uh, once you apply the current to the primary winding. So, because of the current which is flowing in a primary winding that will produce a magnetic flux around it and that magnetic flux is uh, again linked with the secondary winding. Right. So, again the there is a mutually induced EMF in a secondary winding uh, because of this phenomena we define as a uh, transformer, right. So, 
this is a very uh, simple terminology as you can see here the current i1 is flowing in a primary winding and because of this there is a uh, production of magnetic flux around the coil and that uh, magnetic flux is also linked with the secondary winding uh, which is having a number of turns of uh, n2 and uh, because of this uh, uh, flux is linked with the secondary winding it will also induce emf em uh, in a secondary winding this is called a mutually induced emf now uh, that's how it will uh, transfer one ac power into another ac power in terms of voltage or current this is what it calls the working of transformer now let us discuss about the construction of transformer where there are two types of transformer in a, uh, on the base of construction namely one type of uh, transformer is called a core type of transformer and another type of transformer is defined as a shell type of transformer so here uh, once you discuss about the core type of transformer say so the core type of transformer the windings are placed surrounding a considerable part of a laminated core so let us discuss what is it so if you uh, if you further discuss about the cell type of transformer so in this type of transformer the laminated core placed uh, surrounding a considerable part of the uh, winding so let us discuss one by one as a core type of transformer where in core type transformer there are mainly two parts one is called the core itself and another one is called the winding so any transformer is made up of a core in winding right so let's discuss about the core so this is a part of the core where you can see the single lamination uh, staples are used those staples are may uh, are made up of the magnetic materials uh, like uh, uh, iron steel right and which is a laminated this type of strips or staples are connected together and that become a core right so here you can see here this staples are in form of uh, l shape this uh, core is made up of the silicon steel to reduce the hysteresis loss as well as the types of core is square or laminated to reduce the eddy current loss where you can see there are two numbers of uh, limbs so the limbs is nothing but the part of the core on which the winding is wound is uh, known as the limb so you can see here uh, there are two limbs same way here uh, there are two yokes and the part of core used to used to join two limbs is known as the yoke so here is a part of the yoke two l shaped core are interleaving to reduce the uh, reluctance of magnetic path so here this two uh, l shaped are joined together and that will make a core so there are multiple staples are connected together and that will uh, construct the core same way now uh, let us discuss about the winding so in a this is a part of the core with two limbs and two yokes where you can see there is a primary winding having the number of turns is n1 there is a secondary winding having the number of turns are n2 so this is a part of the winding where in a any transformer there are two types of winding one winding is called a primary winding and another winding is defined as a secondary winding right so uh, if we further discuss about the this shape of this uh, winding is a circular cylindrical uh, coil are uh, used due to of the high mechanical uh, strength where in actual construction the primary winding is uh, low voltage or high voltage and secondary winding is also available with the low voltage and high voltage right so in real case the low voltage winding is easiest to insulate it is placed near the core while the high voltage winding bound on a low voltage winding so the insulation problem is reduced so you can see this is a core type of transformer where uh, over the two limbs uh, one part is primary winding and another cylindrical shape is the primary winding and another is a secondary winding with the how the uh, low voltage winding and high voltage winding as bound you can check from this uh, particular uh, figure same way in a shell type of transformer again there are two main parts one, one part is the core and another part is the winding so here you can see this is a kind of core which is having in a e shape or i shape so here you can see this combination of e shape and i shape again this is laminated and there are part of the staples or steps they are uh, joined all together so uh, you see the construction of this uh, uh, core in a shell type transformer so you can see this is e section and this is a i section which will be joined together in parts of the limb and yoke. So, here the number of magnetic circuits are 2 here double where the types of material again it is a silicon steel to reduce the hysteresis loss. Type of the core is a rectangular and laminated to reduce the eddy current losses and number of limbs are here now 3 you can check here the part of core on which the winding is wound is known as the limb and only the center limb is winding is wound right. So, here the number of yokes are 2 you can check here and the core used to uh, join the two limbs is known as the yoke right so here the interleaving of e and i core are interleaving to reduce the uh, 
reluctance of magnetic path. So here you can find this. This is a core where E and I section, which is connected separately in a cardboard form, and this is called an insulating uh, paper where there is a two windings is going uh, going to be wound over uh, this uh, part of the core. You can check here the paper insulation laminator. So the outer part is the core in a shape of E and I, and uh, there is a primary and secondary winding. We are going to connect with the middle limb. Uh, with the leads so you can check the winding here there are uh, there are the winding construction of this shell type transformer where the on a middle limb we are going to connect the primary winding as well as we are going to connect the uh, secondary winding so here primary and secondary winding there are two windings in a, again in a shell type transformer so you can check here the multi layer disc type of uh, also available both winding are placed on the central limb uh, where uh, you can see the 2D way where uh, in a central limb is a core part you have connected uh, two windings primary and secondary where which is nothing but the alternate layer of uh, low voltage winding and a high voltage winding. Here further discuss about uh, this is the uh, circuit of uh, transformer having the primary winding and secondary winding. These are the different examples of transformers are available in a market that you can directly purchase from the uh, market right. So, uh, now, further in a construction of transformer, you can see here uh, uh, in which way you have to construct this transformer. So, you can see this particular uh, figure where uh, the, the middle part inside that is a core and winding and above there is a tank, right. So, you can correlate this particular figure and this particular figure, uh, these are the industrial transformer as well as a residential transformer. See, this part is the core where having two windings let us say primary and secondary winding so this part is available inside so this particular or involved with the transformer tank so here the complete transformer tank is available here right and uh, there is a circulation of the oil uh, in this uh, transformer uh, tank so you can see there is a, a conservator tank that is uh, comprises of the oil uh, that, that is nothing a part of the coolant system and that uh, will cool down the uh, heat which is dissipated by the operation of this uh, transformer. So, you can see this particular where there is a this extended uh, pipes are available and this extended pipes will uh, continuously will circulate the uh, uh, coolant oil in this particular tank and that will cool down the uh, operation of this core and uh, transformer. So, you can see that the complete mechanism where this particular uh, conservator uh, from here the, uh, the hottest oil will be going from this way from this uh, buchol relay uh, and uh, coming here. Now, this will cool it down the oil uh, by this breather circuit. Now, this breather is uh, is exposed with the air. So, that will absorb the environmental air inside this tank and that will cool it down the oil and this continuously oil will circulating in this the extra heat generation dissipation will be provided by this kind of mechanism where this two uh, windings are uh, uh, coming out of this tank you can see that these are the terminals and those terminals are a primary winding and secondary winding. So, here Buchol relays are a specific that will uh, uh, that will control the in and out of the oil from transformer tank to the uh, conservator tank right. So, you th this is the complete construction of uh, a big transformer that has a you know capacity to uh, dissipate more heat that is capacity to generate more heat during the transformer action. So, this is what the construction of transformer. Dear students, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any doubt, please uh, uh, write in a comment box.